the properties of power functions allow us to make some interesting deductions about living cells. We're going to discuss the nutrient balance in a cell, namely at what rate cells consume and absorb nutrients. Now, real biological cells come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes, but these are rather too complicated for us beginners. Let's simplify the problem, therefore, and look at cells that we can easily analyze. So we'll assume that the cell of interest will be spherical. Here we've indicated the radius of such a cell, and let's recall that the volume and surface area of a spherical cell are 4 thirds pi r cubed and 4 pi r squared. So in order to understand this problem, we'll build a simple model. That model involves making a few assumptions. So one we've already made. The first assumption we've made is that the cell is a sphere. Now we're going to make a couple of other assumptions about how nutrients enter and are used up in a cell. So first of all, nutrients coming into a cell have to come in through the surface area. The bigger that surface area, the faster the cell can accumulate nutrients. So we're going to assume that the absorption of nutrients, namely the absorption rate, is proportional to the surface area of the cell that we refer to as S. Now what does that mean? That means that we're assuming that the absorption rate that we'll call A is simply some constant multiplied by the surface area. This constant should be positive in order to make sense since both of these quantities have to also be positive and it reflects something about how quickly nutrients can enter per unit time per unit surface area. In our third assumption, we have to say something about the rate at which nutrients are consumed. And we'll assume that the consumption rate is proportional to the volume of the cell. The bigger the, bigger the cell, the larger its volume, the more material it has to maintain, the more energy it needs to survive, and so this is a simple way to state that. We'd now like to ask the following question. For what cell size would nutrient absorption balance nutrient consumption? To answer this question, let's write down what we know. So we've said that the rate of absorption is some constant times the surface area for the spherical cell. We can rewrite this as K1 times 4 pi r squared, and we'll group these constants together to make it obvious that we've got a power r squared. The consumption rate is K2 times the volume. So here we have K2 times 4 thirds pi r cubed. So this question, in order to answer it, we must equate these two things and solve for the radius r. Let's draw a picture of these two functions. Both of these are power functions. For instance, the absorption is something that looks like this. Now, of course, it has another branch in the negative quadrant, but this is not going to be very informative in this problem since cell radius must be positive. The consumption rate is a cubic. The property of a cubic is that it starts out flatter than a quadratic, and then it rises much more steeply, and so that those two curves will cross in two places. One of those places will turn out to be zero, and the other place is what we're going to solve for and identify. Let's go ahead and solve for the radius at which these two curves intersect. So we must equate these two things. So on one side we have k1 times 4 pi r squared, and on the other side we've got k2 times 4 pi over 3 r cubed. So one solution is going to be r equals 0. That's the uninteresting solution since it means, it means that we have no cell there at all. And the other solution in the case that r is not equal 0, we can cancel out a factor of 4 pi any time, and we can also cancel out a factor of r squared. And when we solve for this, we get 
K1 equals K2 over 3R, which again, we can simplify to read R equals 3, K1 over K2. So we've answered this question, and we've identified the point at which these curves intersect. It's 3, K1 over K2. We can also answer a second question, which is what happens for smaller cells and what happens for larger cells. So looking at the diagram, we see that for smaller cells, the blue curve, which is the absorption rate, is higher than the pink curve, which is the consumption rate. And therefore, for smaller cells, absorption dominates over consumption. In other words, the cell can absorb nutrients faster than they consume them. What about larger cells? Well, the opposite is true. For larger cells, for cells that are bigger than this critical radius, the consumption curve will be much higher. Notice how it very steeply increases, and therefore the consumption will dominate over the absorption these poor cells will not be able to keep up with their nutrient needs.